Here's one experimental evidence of spin orbit interaction. Uh, if you look at the spectral lines for sodium, that yellow light, bright yellow light of sodium that you see at around 589 nanometers, if you look at it at very high resolution, you'll find that that actually has two very closely spaced lines. And the wave numbers for those lines are separated by only 17 reciprocal centimeters. Okay? So this, uh, that is respond, the, that, Transition is a transition from, okay, uh, sodium as electron configuration of sodium. You've got a neon core, the S1, that's your ground state, right? So the ground state of sodium is a doublet S term. Okay, why is it a doublet? Okay, you have one electron, okay, in a partially filled orbital, one partially filled orbital with one electron, so that's a doublet. So it's either spin up or spin down. What is our L here? Big L is just our little L. It's going to be zero. So that's why you have a doublet S. That's your ground state. Now, the yellow line involves a transition from a 3P orbital to a 3S orbital. So in an excited sodium atom, you have a neon core, and your electron is in the 3P orbital. So what's the first excited term for sodium then? Again, you have one unpaired electron in a partially in one partially filled orbital, so that's going to be a doublet, right? So it's a doublet, and what's our L here? Big L is equal to little L is equal to one, so that's a p term. So your first excited state is a doublet p term. Okay, so you don't have doublet p three halves and doublet p one half. We derived that earlier, right? If you have a doublet p term possible J's are three halves and one half, okay? So the doublet P term is actually not singly degenerate. It's actually two levels, a doublet P one half term and a doublet P, uh, doublet P one half level and a doublet P three half level. So what you see there are two lines, two spectral lines in the emission spectrum of sodium. That's known as sodium D line, okay?